Alright folks, welcome back to uh, my video series here on uh, basic mathematics. Uh, we're on video two now where we've already uh, dove into the whole numbers and add the four basic operations of math and adding quantities, subtracting quantities, uh, multiplying and dividing. And um, you know, I, I left that um, introduction, I, we moved through that very quickly and perhaps a little vague and if there's uh, anything you don't understand like I said I want to reiterate that you can email me and we can delve into more specifics about uh, just calculating those and that's it's just something like I said that everything is going to hinge on your ability to multiply basic multiplication facts in your head and rather quickly uh, a lot of this depends on speed and accuracy and I can't stress that enough um, and when I say speed, I don't ever want you to sacrifice accuracy for more speed. I would rather you be slow and accurate than fast and wrong. So uh, when I say I, I mean uh, you in general. I would rather, you, you would probably want to be accurate rather than fast, with the exception of the fact that standardized tests are often timed. So um, unfortunately, you're up against a speed battle as well. Um, parts of things is where uh, people really begin to get confused a lot of times. Um, they've uh, had school experiences that perhaps, you know, made this area of basic math confusing where, like I mentioned before in the introductory video, we as human beings really talk about parts of items in three different languages and I'm going to abbreviate these either as a fraction, a decimal, or a, I'll draw the percent sign, or a percent. And um, this is, this is going to open up a can of worms where not only do you have to know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions, decimals, and percents, which this is a can of worms in and of itself that is often best saved for algebra. <laughs> we'll, uh, I will eventually show you a very easy way to deal with percent problems, percent issues um, in algebra. but. Uh, Briefly, though, when we're talking in arithmetic, you at least need to be exposed to what percents are, uh, and we'll talk about that uh, later. I really try to hone in first on fractions, and um, like I said, you're going to want to know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide all three of these languages, as well as translate them. You need to know how to convert them back and forth, as in, you know, one half, 0.5, and 50% are all the exact same value. It just depends on what you're doing. We use fractions a lot with measurement. Um, decimals we often use with money and things like that. And percents, uh, a lot of times we use with probability and chance, um, as well as you know interest rates and uh, you know amounts increasing, uh, which we'll get into a lot more percent talk later. But and like I said, this is just my take on it. Some of you will be critical, say that I'm not using the right terminology, and I would say. Buzz off, math snob. Um, <clears throat> that was lame. Um, so anyway, we're going we're gonna to open up this fraction can of worms and see what this really consists of. And like I said, we'll have to get into a little terminology here, but I want you to know the concept of this stuff way more so than the terminology. So I'm going to actually erase all this, and we're going to put a big old F up here as in fractions. Okay. Let's just write a very basic, uh, the most simple fraction that everybody's probably familiar with here. We've got uh, 1 over 2. And let's talk about what this says and what it means. Fractions, I like to explain to people that the bottom number tells you how many pieces the item, whatever item you're dealing with, is cut into. You know, if we're talking about a pizza, which I hate to use the old... Uh, cliche pizza thing here with fractions because this will probably take you back to nightmares of elementary school but um, if we talk about a pizza this would be saying simply that this pizza not a butt crack is cut into two pieces okay the top number which is called the numerator which we're not going to get into this this is the denominator this is the numerator but uh, pardon my language but to hell with that we're not going to worry about that we're saying this is how many pieces the items cut into this is how many pieces you've got Okay, so in this case, let's just color in black the part of it that we don't have. Here's the pepperoni for the side of the pizza that we do have. This can be read in several different ways. It can be read as one out of two, one half, one over two, or believe it or not, this is also one divided by two, which you're going to see later on. 
uh, and you're probably saying, well, wait a minute, I thought we were talking about just a fraction here, not what, what's this division stuff. A fraction really is a division problem, and that's, a, that's a something that uh, was never explained clearly to me at a young age. Um, it may have been, uh, who knows, my hormones may have been just out of control when I was probably flying in a spaceship somewhere. <laughs> There I go. Uh, anyway, the um, that was lame also. Um, but uh, yeah, it it, uh, it it's often confusing for people when they hear that a fraction is actually just a division problem. Um, but it is, and we'll talk about that when we get to converting fractions. So this is the amount of pieces it takes to be a whole thing. This is how many you've got. So what happens numerically, and we're going to draw some pictures here some, but I'm going to try to keep this numerical in a lot of ways. Um, what happens if we have 2 out of 2? Well, this crosses into another realm of fractions. So you're going to see very quickly that there's two different things you have to deal with when you're talking about amounts of things in fractions. When you have the amount that you need, you could call that one whole item. And this is called an improper fraction, whereas this is a whole number. And uh, these are the exact same amount, 2 out of 2. If you have two pieces and it takes two pieces to be a whole thing, you have one whole thing. And this holds true as you increase, let's erase this, and we, let's say we have, and this is totally different, three over two. Three over two would say, okay, it takes two pieces to be a whole item, and you've got three pieces, that means you've got more than the whole item. So you could build one whole item with these three pieces, that would take two of those away, and leave you with one left, so you'd have one extra piece out of another two-piece thing. So let's get into some terminology here. When you do not have the amount of pieces it takes to be a whole item, we call that a proper fraction. It's proper for the big number to carry the little number. Uh, and that's just some silly uh, way to try to remember the memorization of a proper fraction. But like I said, I'm more concerned about you understanding this, not memorizing some uh, some words. Uh, a proper fraction is just a fraction value that is expressed that has a value of less than one. Less than one whole thing. Now when you have at least one whole thing or more, it's expressed as an improper fraction. Improper fractions have a value of more than one. And improper fractions have another form uh, that the value can be expressed in, and we'll talk about why in a minute, but it's called mixed numeral, mixed number. Mixed meaning it's part fraction, part whole number. It, that is how we as human beings tend to communicate. You know, I would rather tell somebody that it is, uh, you know, two and a half miles to the grocery store. I wouldn't tell them it was five halves. I wouldn't say, hey, it's five half miles to the grocery store. You know, as, human, as a human being trying to be clear about directions, I would say two and a half. Well, this is the same amount. You know, if you have five pieces and it only takes two to be a whole mile, and you have five half miles, that is every two of these is a mile. So one, two, there's a mile. Three, four, there's a mile. And then an extra half mile. So that's two whole miles and a half mile. And we get into the whole memorization and the format of how to convert these. Well, this just goes back to understanding this is a division problem. 5 divided by 2. Remember earlier I mentioned that you could read this as 5 divided by 2. So what is 5 divided by 2? Well, 2 goes into 5 2 times with 1 left over. And if we wrote that in our long division format, it'll go back to me telling you about our elementary school teachers lying to us about these things called remainders. Well, remainders don't really exist. It's a way that they disguised uh, fractions for us so that we didn't get confused. So they lied to us, but maybe for good reason. But uh, once again, people still think remainders are some actual, uh, you know, useful thing in mathematics. You should never, ever calculate something out to have a remainder. What that remainder is, is the numerator of the leftover fraction, where the outside number of your division problem, I'm blank on whether that's the quotient or the dividend, <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, I already told you math snobs, I'm, I'm, I'm only doing this for practical purposes, but anyway, the, the remainder you're left with goes over top of your outside number of your division box, so you would have two as your whole number, 
and 1 over 2 azure leftover fraction. So there is, um, there is a, the first fraction video uh, that I want to talk about. I'm also I'm going to uh, have to probably do several uh, fractions videos for this fraction uh, concept. So uh, join us on video three momentarily.